right, so here's the last part of this uh, particle motion analytically. The particle moves along the x-axis so that at time t, its position is given by this function. Uh, we already found the velocity function, right? We took the first derivative of this and found that this is velocity. So it says find all values for t for which the particle is moving left. So if it's moving left, then velocity is negative, right? So when I saw left, and I saw left here, right, left to us is negative velocity. So negative velocity here is really helpful. And then what I'm going to do here, just to make this easier, and maybe you're good at this with my algebra is not great, so I need to help myself. So what I'm going to do, Chloe, is this. I'm going to factor out a 3 here, and I'm going to get t squared minus 4t plus 3. Isn't that right? And then I can... I think I can factor that, okay. I get 3 times t, sorry. Oops. t minus 1, right, and t minus 3, isn't that right? That's good factoring, isn't it? So I just factored this. This is just algebra factored. <coughs> the solutions are what? Yeah. So this is our t equals 1 and t equals 3. Now I need to figure out, I, I mean, I have a good idea, right? The value, the a value here is positive. So if I have a parabola with an a value that's positive, I have a minimum parabola so it's like this, isn't it? So what I think is going to happen is this. I think I have, it's going to look like this. I think we're going to have, this is x is 1 here, x is 3 here, and everywhere down here is negative. But, of course, we did cheat and we went and did this on our calculator, didn't we? So go here, and here it is. And it's clear here, right? So everywhere here, velocity, doesn't matter what the velocity is, but the velocity is negative here, isn't it? Right? So that should provide us with our answer, I'm hoping. So go back to our question. And I'm going to answer it here. particle is moving left when time t is t is greater than 1 and less than 3 right because velocity is negative there is that right it's not bad, is it? So when we want to find out when it's when it's moving left or right, first thing I would do is I would find out when it's at rest. It would be an, would be a pretty easy way to do it, wouldn't it? Find out when it's at rest, and then and then either look at the graph or test it a little bit, right? All right. That brings us to our last part. Find the total distance traveled by the particle in the interval zero to five, <clears throat> which is seems pretty easy. This is a way. Tell me why a person might set it up this way. This is the way I saw it set up by somebody today. They were like, you know what? T is, here's T for time, and here's the position. At time is zero, where's the particle at time is zero? The little particle, four, five, zero. Where is it? It's at 11. Go, right, go back to the position function, and the position function was... Right, the position function was t, t cubed minus 6 t squared plus 90 plus 11. If you put a zero in for all those t values, you're going to just get 11, right? So we start here at 11, right? And we want, this is the interval that we're looking at right here, isn't it? Oh, and you know what? Please forgive me. It should be like this. It should be t is greater than or equal to zero if t is less than or equal to 5, okay? So I'll go back there. So what this other person did today was they showed me this, Ryan. They're like, at, at t is 5, and at t is 5, they got a value of 31. And then they thought that the distance traveled was, they thought the distance traveled was 21, uh, was 20. That makes some sense, right? Because how far is it from 11 to 31? It's 20, but what do we know about, we already looked at this thing, what do we know about our particle? 
Yeah, he's. It's actually the right way to say it. It's, he's not well behaved. The behavior is not. It's not well behaved. So he moves left sometimes, and then he moves wherever. Then he ends up where he ends up, and then maybe he'll move back right a little bit, and then possibly back left, etc. So our this guy moves around, doesn't he? But we know where he moved around. We know where he changed directions, didn't we? From the last problem, if you look at the last at the last problem up here, where did he change direction? At <clears throat> t is one, he changes direction, and at t is three, he changes direction, doesn't he? So we go back here, and we have to test those those whoops those distances. So that's what we're going to do. So we have we're going to assess this at we're going to evaluate this at t is one and t is three. I'm not going to ask you to go back and do that math, <clears throat> but that's the math I would have done. If you go back to the position function, you put in find x of one, <clears throat> x of one happens to be 15. So which way did he go? Right? So initially he moves to the right by 4, doesn't he? And then we know from 1 to 3 he's moving left, right? Well, how far, where does he go? He goes at, at uh, x of 3, he's at position 11. And that's what we thought. We knew that at the beginning, the first question we were asking in the first video is, Initially, is he moving right? Is the particle moving right or left? We said it's moving right. Well, we didn't assess how far, but when we evaluated how far, he moved over how far? Let's make this. Let's make this column distance. And what is this distance from 11 to 15? Is how far? Four. We knew that between the first second and the third second, we proved it on that velocity graph. We knew that from the first second to the third second, he was moving left. We just didn't know how far, but we can assess that. Because he moves left, he's at 15, he moves all the way over to 11. How far did he go? Four again, right? And then he ends up back at 11. He moves to the right from 11 to 31, which is how far? I'm sorry? Which is 20, isn't it? Which is 20. So... We add all these together, right? We're going to do the summation of all these distances. How far did our little guy move? He moved 28 units. So when you're asked a question like this, the first thing you have to like really keep in mind is that I can see where you'd say, I'm interested in the interval from, from 0 to 5, because <clears throat> that's what it says right here, you, we, that we care about 0 to 5. But I'm saying to you, remember the fact that he moves left, right, left, right, doesn't he? And we have to kind of keep track of which way he's moving. Right? He doesn't just go from zero to from zero to thirty-one. <clears throat> he starts at zero, he ends up at thirty-one, but he changes his mind a bunch of times. And we have to add up all those distances. So here are those distances, and, and that's what we got. Good enough? That's it. I think that's good. So that's analytic that's how we would look at this analytically.